Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. And today we're going to do a final test on this beautiful Kenmore Stylist 86 sewing machine. Uh, and uh, in this video we're going to show you how to wind a bobbin, how to um, thread the machine, how to work the various controls. Uh, and um, let's see. I guess I'm going to have to pull the thread off this bobbin. Okay. All the old thread is pulled off of that bobbin. It's a little bit easier sometimes to start your bobbin thread before you put your bobbin on the bobbin winder. What you want to do is go through one of these small holes in the outside of the bobbin uh, from the inside to the outside hold on to that little tail of thread and put your bobbin on the bobbin winder You got to deflect your machine by turning the knob in the center of the hand wheel towards you a quarter turn. Now the hand wheel can turn without cycling the machine. Push the lever over until it uh, enters the side of the bobbin, uh, and the uh, little rubber bobbin winder tire in there will now contact the hand wheel. And as the hand wheel turns, it uh, winds the bobbin. And you can cut your little tail off once you get a few turns on there to hold the thread in place. Uh, and go easy on your uh, foot control. There's no reason to go fast. Uh, by the way, as your bobbin fills, it's going to push this lever further and further out until it clicks out and disengages once your bobbin's full. So click that lever out, and uh, there's still a little tail of thread on there that I'm going to cut off. It's sticking out of the hole. And uh, leave a few inches of tail, or a few inches of thread on your bobbin. When your bobbin goes into the bobbin case, you want the thread to come off of the top of the bobbin to the right. Off of the top to the right. And that, that way it goes into the slot here. There's a slanted slot in the side of the bobbin case. And the thread's going to go into that slot and under this flat leaf spring until you feel it kind of click into place. And then that adds the lower tension to your uh, lower thread. If you hold this little lever on the side of the bobbin case, uh, your bobbin won't drop out as you're handling it. And you want to put the bobbin in with this little finger pointing up. There's a cutout for it under here. It's gonna that that little finger is gonna fit into, and that keeps the uh, bobbin case from turning when the bobbin turns. Uh, it'll click into place. If you don't feel a click, just check to make sure that it's in securely, and that the bobbin case isn't gonna fall out. You've all, already got your thread through the first few thread guides. Now you're gonna go straight down between the discs of the upper tension around and you're not going to catch this big uh, thread guide yet. You're going to come all the way around 
until you can pick up the check spring. It's up here at the top of the at the top of the uh, tension assembly and when you have it right when you pull your thread you'll see the check spring move now you're going to go back and go under that big thread guide and up to your uh, take up lever i forgot to mention that you need to tighten the uh, knob in the center of your hand wheel so when you turn the hand wheel the machine cycles turn it till you're take up levers up where you can get to it easily then go through from right to left through the take up lever on down here to the uh, thread guide at the bottom and down to the thread guide on the needle clamp. And let's see. Okay, there it is. And then on this machine, you're going to go through the eye of the needle from the left towards the right, towards the center of the machine. And it's a good idea to cut a nice fresh end on your thread so that those little frayed ends are not deflecting your thread from the needle hole. Now to get a good uh, view of the eye of the needle, put a piece of white paper, in this case buff yellow, uh, behind the needle and the, uh, the eye will suddenly pop into view. Okay. There. Through the eye of the needle from the left to the right towards the center of the machine. Now hold your needle thread and turn the hand wheel towards you one full turn and the needle will take the thread down and wrap it around the bobbin and then bring up the lower thread the needle takes the thread down the hook picks up the thread from the back of the needle and the hook rotates around the bobbin and wraps the upper thread around it and brings up the lower thread Okay, this is some uh, fairly heavy-duty denim from a pair of Carhartt logger jeans. Uh, put your fabric under the presser foot and lower the lever on the back to drop your presser foot onto the fabric. Over here is your stitch length control. And um, from the zero position in the center, as you go down, your, thread, your stitches get longer and longer and longer and longer and longer until you have your longest stitches at the bottom. And from the center up, you get reverse stitches longer and longer and longer and longer until all the way up you're getting your longest reverse stitches. Now if you want your stitches to be the same length uh, when you reverse as they are going forward you can lock the uh, uh, the stitch length lever with this knob here. Um, so you want to be about halfway down here.
there. See this it's not going all the way to the bottom because that's where you, the length you want your stitch and it's not going all the way to the top so your reverse stitches are going to be the same length as your uh, forward stitches. I'm going to make this stitch even a little bit smaller. That's about right for uh, regular fabric. Uh, stitch length here. Uh, this is your upper tension here, and you're going to want to set that somewhere around two or three. Um, when you look at the bottom of your fabric after you sew a seam, you'll be able to tell if it's got a nice, neat, uh, tidy seam, or if it, it's loopy and loose looking. If, if it looks a little bit loose, uh, you want to add just a little bit of tension. If it's really tight and it's puckering up the fabric, then you may want to let the tension off just a little bit. Um, this control up here is the pressure on your presser foot. So if you're sewing a, a regular fabric, you want to push this button down about halfway for regular fabric. If you're sewing heavy fabric, you may need a little more pressure. If you're sewing really delicate fabric, you may want to have just a little bit of pressure. But in general, about halfway down for regular sewing. And of course, you probably saw this is the release. This little collar here, press down on the collar, and instantly you have no pressure on the presser foot. Uh, and that's good for if you want to do darning or uh, machine embroidery or any, any sort of free motion sewing where you're moving the fabric instead of the machine. This control here on the bed is uh, the feed dog drop. If, as I mentioned before, you want to do some sort of free motion sewing where you're moving the fabric instead of the teeth of the feed dogs, uh, turn this knob clockwise all the way to the down position, and then all those, all the teeth of the feed dogs drop below uh, the surface of the needle plate and uh, don't contact the fabric to move it. Uh, if you're sewing a delicate fabric like, a, you know, silk or something really light, you may want to uh, turn it a couple notches toward the down position, but don't drop the teeth all the way. Then the teeth will come up a little bit uh, above the plate and move your fabric, but they won't dig in like the, aggressively like uh, they do when the teeth are all the way up. So, uh, hold your needle threads for the first few stitches while your machine makes the lock stitch. Lock your threads in place. And off we go. stitches that are a little bit longer, uh, push your uh, uh, sti stitch length adjusting lever down a little more. And then we'll see the fabric move more quickly because making bigger stitches. This machine is a pretty fast machine, but if you, if you want to slow, so slow and carefully you can. Let's go a little easier on the presser foot and you can go as slow and careful as you want. And faster, faster, faster. Yeah. So that's about it. Um, we have a nice balanced stitch on the bottom. Uh, that's about all the controls. Uh, your belt may not feel uh, really tight to you, but you don't want your belt any tighter than it needs to be to uh, to turn the uh, hand wheel with authority. You don't want it to slip, but 
just beyond where the belt would slip. Just a little bit tighter than slippage tightness. About where you want it. That uh, uh, takes the least effort from your motor. And uh, uh, tightening it any more than it is now uh, is going to bog it down and make it run slower and work harder. So you really don't want that. Uh, right now the uh, stitch length is wide open so you can go anywhere uh, You don't have to set this lock at all if you don't want to. That's just, just for if you want to have a set stitch length. So every time you come back to your machine, it's at that stitch length and the same stitch length in reverse. Otherwise, just leave this uh, this lock knob all the way open counterclockwise. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, So this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Sewing. If you've come here from some other place on the internet, um, uh, stop by our website, uh, which is uh, stagecoachroadsewing.com. We're on Stagecoach Road, therefore, stagecoachroadsewing.com. And there you'll see hundreds of beautiful machines that we've restored over the years. Uh, you'll see, um, you know, multiple views of each machine and. Uh, Little bit of information about each one um, and uh, you'll see uh, oh, 15 to 30 machines that uh, are for sale that you can take home right now um, so yeah stop on by stagecoachroadsewing.com and uh, thanks for watching